Hello. Um, today I'm going to continue my review of the first chapter of... It's actually kind of more of a book analysis. It's not really a review. I guess it may be a review as well. But anyway, I'm just finishing up the first chapter. I've already done two uh, book analysis slash review. If you haven't seen them already, I definitely check them out. And they are of the first ten pages. But anyway, let me just get right into it. Now, usually I uh, go over the characters first and what I learned about them and things that to analyze. But I'm going to actually start off with some more interesting things. And uh, I learned more about the uh, history of the Hungry Games and kind of the government. Now, I don't know what how to pronounce these words, so if I don't pronounce it right, you know, I really don't give a shit. You know, I'm, I'll probably don't care. So, Panem, I guess, is the country. And I, I didn't know if it was a country or it was like a name of a city or something. Uh, but now I know it's a country and it had, it had 13 districts in all. And apparently, uh, Panem is actually North America, but I guess the people there or whatever got wiped out by droughts, storms, fires, uh, rising of sea levels. And I guess there was wars over like the remaining sustenances. And apparently that all contributed to North America's end. And I'm kind of curious to know what exactly, like why they ran out of food and stuff. Like why, wh- what made them run out of things. I don't know if they just kind of like overpopulated and what happened with that. I want to definitely know more about, you know, like, you know, what happened with mankind? Did it, was it just, you know, ran out of things or ran out of stuff and, or, you know, what was it? You know, I, I definitely want to know. And right now I don't want to make any predictions because it would be very vague. It was a very vague understanding. I guess I'm assuming that they just run out of things to support the population. And I guess wars happened and just that's what happened, I guess. Maybe there's a lot of natural disasters, as it says here. But anyway, out of all this, uh, Panem came out. And apparently, I guess that country came around. And I guess it was still kind of the same government system it was. Because people were having a revolution. Or they did have a revolution. And they uh, tried to overtake the government. But I guess this is where it gets kind of weird. And what I mean by weird, it means it doesn't make sense. Uh, the government, I guess, defeated all 13 districts. And not only did they defeat 13, they defeated the 13th. Uh, not only did they defeat, uh, you know, 13 districts, the 13th district was completely destroyed. So I'm not exactly sure how that's possible. Um, I mean, obviously, you can just say, oh, yeah, that's what happened. But the thing is, though, how exactly does you know a whole population of a country lose against a government which probably doesn't consist of too many people um so that's definitely kind of weird with me and i definitely want that to expand further than just it happened um but I, it's very very creative and very interesting but i just don't want to know how there must be some kind of futuristic weapons because if you think about in america today if every single person in america went march the white house against all the people in the government there's no way that they would we would lose i mean that'd be kind of weird you know so i mean if you think they like, maybe the army or something but i can't i mean the army is part of the people too the army you know is the people you know they have you know families and stuff so if everyone was rebelling the army would i would think rebel too it, it wouldn't make sense i mean maybe they wouldn't rebel and maybe promise not to kill their families or something i don't know there probably could have been something but it seems like a plot hole and unless it's kind of filled i don't want to make any guesses but i definitely want that to expand more so like i said they were called the dark days and after all that happened they made the treaty of treason which I guess prevents them from having a revolution, and thus the Hunger Games were created. And the purpose of the Hunger Games... Well, hold on a second. Um, the purpose of the Hunger Games is kind of just to stop revolutions, and it also is the way of checking up on each district. And I'll get into the real purpose of the Hunger Games um, in a second, but first let me go over the basics. Um, it's they, they say it's like a punishment for the revolution, <clears throat> and also, I guess the rules of the Hunger Games is each district uh, gives a tribute, which is one boy and one girl. So you have 24 participants in all, 
And I guess in, in the Hunger Games, several weeks go by and they will fight to the death to de- determine the winner. And the winner of the district, uh, you know, of that particular district, receives a life of ease. And then the district itself of the winner, um, they're like showered with prizes. They get mostly food, grain, oil, and sugar. Which kind of leads to the true purpose of the Hunger Games. It's kind of to turn the districts against each other. And if you haven't figured out why, I mean, if you had a bunch of people that hate the government, but you can make a system where you can make it so the districts would compete against each other, it would kind of give that rivalry. rivalry. Ugh, I can't pronounce words. I'm sorry. But anyway, so yeah, that's um, exactly what's happening here. I mean, if you make a system where you have a prize saying, hey, you get a bunch of happiness, you know, but you have to kill each other for it. You know, they're going to completely forget about who's behind all this. And I don't know. It's definitely a very dark, but I I do like this. I mean, I don't like it in the sense that, oh, my God, I love suffering. But I definitely think this makes it a very dark world. And, you know, I I can definitely understand why people aren't having a revolution now because I was kind of wondering, you know, what's stopping them. And I guess there is a lot more fear now. Um because it's definitely, the true purpose of the Hunger Games is definitely to show how powerful the capital is, and it's definitely to install fear. There was a quote um, in the book I thought it was very, you know, very crazy. It was like, look how we take your children and sacrifice them, and there's nothing you can do. If you lift a finger, we will kill every last one of you, just as we did in District 13. So I thought that was pretty cool, and I was, oh, when I say cool, I just think it was very interesting. Um, I learned a little bit more about the capital and some other things. Um, but I don't want to get into that too much right now. Uh, I do learn that they actually force the districts to treat the Hunger Games as like a sporting event and a festivity. So it really is kind of fucked up. Um, but I also learned more about... Um, this is actually kind of weird for me. About the, uh, I learned more about the government. And there's... Okay, so here's how the Hunger Games works. If you're 12 years old, you have to, uh, you know, put your name in the drawing to be picked. And if you're... it's If you're 13, you have to do it. You have to have two entries, 14, three entries, and so on. Until you're 18, you have seven or six entries. Um... And that seems legit, but I guess the catch is is that if you're poor, um, it's kind of worse off for you. And the reason why is because they have a system where if you put your name in like the drawing more, you get more supplies. And here's where it also gets a little, you know, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so you get a year's supply of grain and oil. And hold on, first of all, I don't even know what the oil is used for. I mean... I can't imagine, I don't know if it's like cooking oil so they can, you know, cook turkey. I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't I don't understand what the purpose of the oil is. Maybe it's for cooking. I, I can't, I don't know. Maybe I just don't know. Um, and then the grain. Uh, I don't know, like that's a lot. And, and apparently, this is where it gets, doesn't make sense, is that you're able to, after okay i'm getting really off track let me just start for you know let me just cut this real quick okay so what i'm trying to say is so you can opt your name and get more supplies basically to support yourself so it kind of encourages poor people to put their name in the drawing more so therefore you know rich people don't really, kids don't really have to worry about their kids getting into like the hunger games you know actually i think that the main character katniss opted her name like 22 times which this is this is what I was talking about that doesn't make sense. Twenty two times, like you have twenty two years a twenty two year supply of oil and grain. To me that's like all right, so how, I mean I can't imagine life being that much bad, you know, like that worse off. I mean, yeah, you have to but she the way she described it, it sounded like it'd be a lot worse. If you have like twenty two years of supplies, that's pretty good. I mean, yeah, it's true that you're taking a risk, but I don't know. It's definitely fucked up. I definitely don't think that, you know, she doesn't have it bad off. But um and this is what I'm really confused about. I don't fucking know what a tesseray is. Okay, I understand. You know, I looked up on Google what exactly it is because I know what it does. I know that it's 
you know, it's traded um, for multiple entries and it's worth a year's supply of grain and oil. And, it, you know, but I don't know what exactly is it. You know, is it like a stone? Is it a thing? Is it a currency? Is it just the option, the option itself? Which wouldn't make sense because it's like, why would you say you could get a tesserae, which is worth this? That doesn't make sense. I don't know. I don't know exactly what it is. You know, I don't know. If, I don't, so I'm confused about that. I definitely don't know what it is. And I, I think uh, Gail brought up that this this system like I said, actually causes that hatred and distrust between, you know, starving people, you know, the poor people, and the people that don't really have to opt their name, you know. So it kind of creates that tension. And you could see that between Gail and Mage, apparently. Um, Gail's kind of hating on Mage because she only has to put her name in, like, maybe five times. But yet he has it, like, 42 times, which is crazy. Um, so... Okay, so anyway, let me go ahead and get into the characters now, I think. Hold on. Uh, well, first I want to get into more about... The, I learned about District 12. I learned that it's actually the uh, laughing stock of all the districts. I mean, not only is it probably the poorest, but it's also last stock. It only has 8,000 people. And I was trying to think, you know, like how much an average this country... Like, what's the population? And assuming that District 12 has the lowest population... You know, there's probably only like a million people total in this country, which really isn't a lot. That's not even a city, like of New York. So, um, and they have only had two winners in the Hunger Games in the past 74 years. And the one winner I definitely want to talk about, he is very interesting, and I think there's a lot of foreshadowing going around, uh, around that, but, um... I learned that the Day of Reaping is kind of treated like a holiday, and the Day of Reaping is the Hunger Games draw, basically. And I learned that it's really treated like a holiday, kind of forced to be like a festival, and like I said earlier, and people kind of, I guess, don't like that. Um, and they also kind of use that day to keep tabs on all the districts. Okay, so anyway... And I don't know if I mentioned before, you get and the, it only the Hunger Games only applies for people that are between twelve and eighteen years old. So let me get into the characters now. And this is where I have to continue, unfortunately, my hatred of the main character. Now it's not so much hatred. I do understand her position, and I do understand that you know where she's coming from and why she's like this. But to me, it doesn't mean I have to like her because it's understandable. I mean, I understand why serial killers are serial killers. It doesn't mean I approve of it. Um, so anyway, so she's, there's an instance, I want to get some minor details first. I don't know what this meant. She said she had to calm herself down when Prim's blouse was not tugged in. Now, either she's OCD controlling or maybe like you get punished if you don't look good, which could be possible. It would make sense. Um, so that could be it. I don't, I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt, but if not, that's kind of weird on her part. Kind of like some OCD shit. Um, I, this is something that was very immature of her and irrational. She rejects favors from her mom and she gets angry at her mom whenever she offers something. That's stupid. First of all, oh, I'm so mad that my mom is helping me out right now. Like, come on, grow up. Seriously, I'm so sick of her being like, I hate my mom because she's my mom. <laughs> like, I really want to see a very good reason for why she hates him. If it's not a good reason, I'm just going to... Continue my hatred and bash her constantly. Um, another thing I don't like about her that kind of contributes to her being a sociopath is that she only really thinks about food. And I've already said this, but when Gail was complaining about, uh, you know, the current lifestyle and whatever, her response in her head wasn't like, oh, it does suck or, oh, wow, it's whatever. She says, it's pointless. It doesn't fill our stomachs to complain. It scares off game. What the fuck is wrong with you? Okay, if you're, you know, if it's like, man, I'm being enslaved right now. Uh, to me, that's just like to only think about food. Okay, so if someone wants to say, okay, well, you know, that's all you really can think about. Well, let me tell you something right now. That makes you a very passive person. I'm going to tell you why. She's definitely very passive. First, let me give some examples. You know, you know when he, when Gail is talking about that, how they could run away. She was like, you know, there's no point even talking about it. And that really shows her unwillingness to even fight. And she even thinks it's pointless to be angry. 
at the government. You know, you should be spending that time getting food. Now, here's the thing. While that may be true, it may be pointless, literally. If you've already given up the battle in your mind, you've already given up your life. Now, I think that when you... Okay, so here's the thing. You know, it's kind of like if you were getting raped, and instead of, like, doing your best to really just... I mean, if you had to get raped, you would want to try your best to kind of fight it. I can't imagine anyone being like, hmm, well, let me go ahead and lube up my butt some more. Uh, Let me go ahead and uh, make it good for you, at least. I mean, there's nothing I can do. I might as well make it good for you. That's basically what she's doing, and it's very sad. Um... So it's very passive trait. I don't like that. I don't like passiveness. Um, I definitely think Gail is quite the opposite. She she altered her name twenty two times, which uh, to me, I mean, do you really need twenty two years worth of oil? I, I don't know. And grain, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so I learned that Prim had. This is her first time uh, giving. This is a spoiler, obviously. Uh, obviously, you know she ops her name uh this is their first year of doing that and of course she gets picked which is very crazy i want to really keep reading but i can't because i have to do this sh- stupid shit i don't even know why anyway and um, so i learned more about gail i learned that he's actually very passionate i kind of already knew this already but he really kind of like stands up you know he's still fighting it in his mind and i like that and i like how he's passionate about taking care of his kids he's responsible He's very selfless. He, I mean, for someone to opt your name 42 times, and I think there's like only like, I don't know if they actually gave a number, so never mind. So, yeah, so anyway, you know, he kind of sees through this whole Tessa Ray system I was talking about earlier. You know, he knows that's definitely tearing the people apart in District 12. And not only that, it kind of creates that, oh, you, you're, you know, you have it better off than me. I, I hate you. And it, it, it kind of makes everyone hate each other rather than the government. So he kind of sees through that, and that's really cool, and I like that. It's very mature. I definitely like Gail over this other retard. Um, so anyway, he's definitely very selfless. I think that he would definitely give his life for someone opposed to maybe like Katniss. Maybe Katniss would do that for Prim, but I don't know. So anyway... Mage, I guess, you know, I didn't understand what the comment was earlier that I read about you only have to have minimum times. Well, she's obviously one of the rich people, so she only has to have, you know, the minimal entries of like five. And I also learned, now this is where it really gets interesting for me. Okay, so I learned a little bit more about the first uh, winner of uh, the Hunger Games in District 12, or, or one of the few. I guess one of the two. Um, this guy is, you know, he's a middle-aged guy. And the first, let me just say, it's kind of funny. He actually tries to hug the announcer the day of Reaper. And I guess this whole thing is kind of televised for across the country. So it's kind of funny that he tried to go hug her on stage. I mean, you know, I guess District 12 already kind of is like the shittiest and laughed, at, you know, gets laughed at the most. So seeing that kind of makes it kind of even funner. And I think it's funny to see like, some drunk and he was like he was drunk on stage and he tried to go hug her i thought that was kind of funny he's middle-aged and i guess he's kind of fat and like i said earlier you're supposed to get like a pleasant life after you win but here's the thing that i noticed that's very interesting i think it's a little bit of foreshadowing you know he's enjoying his pleasant life right but i think it kind of shows how bad the hunger games are now even though it's like, okay, well, dude, you know, your whole district gets treated and, you know, you get a good life. Well, here's the thing. In the Hunger Games, I know that you have to kill your opponents. So maybe they kind of fucked with him because it says he was drunk. It's almost like he was just so drunk he didn't even want to think straight. You know, I have a feeling that he kind of did that because it was the day of reaping and he kind of wanted to forget the past because if he won, that means he killed people and not just people, children. So... That's definitely could mess with your head. So I can t- totally see how this pleasant life really isn't so pleasant. Um, it's not very fucked up. Um, I don't really know how to pronounce his name. Let me see. It's it's Hey Mitch Abernathy. Anyway, so that's basically it. And I'm really excited to learn what happens with Prim because at the very end, it's very cliff 
it's a cliffhanger. I mean, prim. And hold on, you know, first Katniss is just talking about, oh, I really hope my name isn't called. I really hope my name. She didn't even think about prim. She's like, yeah, whatever. You know, as long as I don't get my name called. So anyway, um, this is David, and this is my chapter one review. I definitely can't wait to read the next chapter. All right, goodbye.